Look at me. Mike Bunn is possibly Ireland's best-known fashion photographer. Mike grew up and was educated in London, England. His first introduction to photography was as a small child. He would sit at the bottom of the stairs where there was a beautifully carved chest from Burma. Inside this chest was a veritable magic carpet ride to Africa his mother's photographs of life in British East Africa. Photography was ingrained in Mike's blood. I came on a trip to Ireland. The day I arrived here, um, I just felt like the dog that jumped over the wall. I just didn't want to go back. I started pining for, for Ireland when I went back to Chelsea. And eventually I came to live here and uh, started taking photographs. I could, you know, it was just, just, it was just an open palette. Want to get the castle in? It has been said of Mike Bunn yeah, that he yeah, could find good. beauty in a toad. Mike Bunn is not capable of taking a shot that isn't beautiful. He sees beauty in the most extraordinary things. And that is easy to see by the magical work he creates. The phone didn't stop ringing from then on for me to take fashion pictures. And I suddenly realized that for me, um, whether it's photographing a woman or a fella in, 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 as a model or or for that matter, a landscape or a food shot, it was all the same. I was suddenly realizing that the fashion had made me a better photographer because I was now learning in my studio a discipline which I had control of, which I could then go out and use in the field. And it's excited me, and all these years later, I'm more excited about photography than I've ever been. All these slate greys here, look, it's lovely, isn't it? The one thing with photography that I've always found a bit disturbing, okay, it's not really tactile. Like, a painter looks and understands light and uses it on a palette with his hands. A sculptor does it. But with photography, we, we, we have the light, we understand it, and we then take a picture using the light, but we're not actually touching anything. I've always found that rather frustrating. That's probably the most tactile photography has ever been because you were, you, you, it was hands-on, you were touching paper, you were touching chemicals and mixing them. And now we come into the digital age, it's very exciting, but it's got more divorced from being tactile. When I first started using digital, I was so conscious of it that uh, I used to use the, 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 the tags that you took off the the rolls of film like Tri-X or, or Ektachrome and I'd stick them on the back of the viewfinder so people thought I was shooting film you know, so they wouldn't bother to look at the picture and every now and again I'd hide and go, have a lift the flap up and have a quick look and off we go again you know. <laughs> uh, it's the age of digital uh, imagery um, and I think you have to really balance the two together I think if you put the two in bed together you can really get some exciting results the, the young kids must realize that you have to go back to the classics. You've got to, to, to understand and embrace something that was very, very beautiful. So having said that, I've come through all that. So when I now use like digital cameras and things, uh, I put the two in bed together and I can't let my classical training go. Mike Bunn's classical training has made him one of Ireland's most sought after photographers. With notable clients like top Irish designer Louise Kennedy and major brands from Fortune 500 companies, it is easy to see why these clients continue to come back to Mike for their next campaign. Mike treats each shot as if it were an epic film, which is evident in his work. Perhaps it was his mother's early influence and those exotic images of her travels to Africa. Either way, there seems to be a fairy tale story told in each of his images. Okay, this is what we're doing. Karen, the people going in the boat is Frank, me, Costello, myself, 
We had an idea we were going to do maybe a shot of the sun coming round the castle, the boat shot um, with Karen at first light because the sun does normally come up round there. But all hell broke loose because the minute we wanted to do it at seven o'clock, we all rendezvoused at the boathouse opposite the hotel and um, it started to rain. And out, out came the umbrellas. So we thought, oh my God, you know. By the time we'd got the boats in position, it had stopped raining, and we had this wonderful soft light. We didn't have sun, and in a way, it's better because if we'd had sun, it would have been too backlit. But it was that lovely flat mercurial lighting, and the water was absolutely flat calm. When you're working from scratch, you, you, you have an idea, you don't actually have a, a brief brief because no one really knew what it was like. I, for, I had a book on Ashford Castle, which we, we had a little preview at, which we, it, it helped us do a bit of scouting. We knew that we could do this, we could do that, we knew where the light came in the morning. Well, the idea was to just, it's, it, obviously to try and get an establishing shot of the castle and we wanted uh, Karen to be in a boat. Um, with the castle in the background. But I think when you have a, sh a shoot like this, I think we've managed to do it in such a way that um, it could relate into a story or five stories. No specific plot. Leave marble stones there as black as ink. Such a rather nice lighting, isn't it? With gold and silver. We were trying to get the feeling that uh, Karen is a very, very beautiful girl, a very lovely Irish girl, who has quite an Italian and quite a nostalgic look about her, uh, that she felt comfortable. This was her environment, whether it was at the boatyard, whether it was standing in a passageway in the hotel, or whether she was in the grounds. I think it was to try and make it look as though she was part of the environment without overtaking it and it overtaking her. And I think we managed to do that. My days are yeah. over. Straighten up a bit now, Robert. And lay me down. I wish I was in caring. I, th I think between the different shots we've taken, there's a good balance, you know. And Colston Julian was born and raised in Bombay, India, now Mumbai. Colston worked his way through college by working in an advertising firm production house, where he apprenticed with a cinematographer. Of course, at the time, Colston would not have been aware how cinema would influence his photography. Colston never had any formal training in photography, but this never stopped him as it only helped him see things a little differently. I hated the first shoot I did. It was horrible. I didn't understand fashion. Came back again and said, can we shoot more? And I said, why not? Shot, and then it just so happened that he went and met L. Uh, the editor at L said, this is nice work, and called me in. I look at the first job, the very first paid job that I did was like an eight-page fashion feature for L magazine. So it's, I guess I've just been very lucky. 
Colston gets some of his inspiration from Bill Watterson's comic strip Calvin and Hobbes. To Colston, there is no better way to live life than in a make-believe world where there is always an element of fun and something new to be discovered. Okay, ready and The big picture he sees is just that, an analysis of situations where everything comes wonderfully alive. Colston's aim is to neither conform nor belong, but simply offer a point of view that is uniquely his own. We join Colston on location at the Samode Palace. Colston is shooting an editorial shoot for a North American fashion magazine. Now notice the motion in Colston's shots. His subject never seems to stay still. Perhaps this is his cinematic influence breathing new life into a still medium. Uh, your right foot on the, on the chair, turning the camera. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, that, that's lovely. Yeah, really fast. Uh, I like film. I, I kind of think film romanticizes the visual and takes it forward. Um, I see a lot more with available light than I would with strobe. I also think strobe's kind of harsh uh, in its tonality. Yeah, I like, I like mixing light sources, but constant light is like my favorite. And uh, I think, especially for uh, the large format, the available light, it, it just shows through, it just takes it to another level. And yeah, I tend to prefer to go into bigger images. I like, I like my visuals to hit you hard when you see them, uh, no matter if it's dramatic or if it's a classic image. At a day and age where everybody's shooting digital, I, I just think uh, it tends to stand out to see an old craft. Literally, it's a craft now because when you're shooting digital, and I do shoot a lot of digital, most of the commercial stuff that I'm shooting is digital. Uh, you tend to kind of, it's like microwave photography, you shoot and you're, you're looking at the final. Uh, and I, 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 I tend to rely on my instincts a lot more. I find that when I'm shooting digital, I tend to lose that because you're constantly checking your frame every five minutes. If you're not doing it, 20 other people are trying to. Uh, there's a human element with film. Uh, there's, there's a guarantee that will happen in terms of a mistake or an error that will come through when you're shooting film simply because you don't know what's going to happen to it. And I think that's what makes each image special, the whole process. No, no, light from here. They're going in there, yeah? Can we have a... Can we have Kitty? Send the girls here. Kazi, Kazi. It's not about the film or digital, it's the process and the discipline of film. Uh, you've got to be sure, you've got to trust your judgment, you got to take if the light strays a little bit, you take your instance, you stop up, you stop down. Uh, I, I think all that goes into it. It's just not about the quality of light, that the way film reacts to light. It's just about the natural and the process and, and everything. So, but um, I think digital is catching up pretty soon and it'll break my heart to shift to digital though. But I, I, I don't see that happening. Um, I also see I also see myself Shooting various formats, I, I, I think I would get into film at some point, not for a full-time purpose, but just to experiment with the medium. Being a photographer, you always want to see a motion picture. I, I sometimes, like the whole story we shot for FQ, I can see it, I can see the girl running. I think I think in, in terms of, of motion, most of the times when I'm, because I get a lot of inspiration from film. Uh, so I do see a gradual transition to film, come back to stills. They, they get me off. I mean, uh, I, I, I could inspire myself from a book to, to shoot uh, motion, right? Let's go, come. Six tier and Okay, look, okay, look, let's go, come, come. Six tier and Okay, look, let's go, come. Six tier and Okay, look, when you come closer, we'll have to move the light. Beautiful. Again, my dearest, go. Yeah, nice. Close your eyes and look. Look like you're amazed. You're just shocked you're seeing somebody. Go! Softer, softer. I mean, I shoot a lot of editorial. I love the editorial work I shoot. So I'm just, I'm just so excited to see it. Beautiful! I can hardly wait. Again, my dear, uh, I think go. we're working on two stories. Uh, we're, we're talking nice. about a woman that lives, like in, uh, lives, lives with, uh, with her husband in, in this palace. After. And it's kind After. of well, bored, but she's, she's kind of, well, she's in a wicked kind of way seeing somebody else. So she's getting back, she's guilty. I think the opening, the opening frame says it all, where she's looking over her shoulder. She's, she kind of had the night out. She's guilty about it. She's looking back just to make sure nobody's seen her. 
she gets into she's she's exorbitant she wears fancy clothes she lives a great life she's bored she sees a man she fancies him she flirts she gets him uh, there's a bit of naughtiness there's a bit of wicked uh, and, and i think uh, lisa portrayed this wonderfully i mean uh, the whole sense of of her looking out of the balcony whether it was her uh, in the passageway thinking of thinking of the lover i mean i don't know the, it's just the way the story takes it it starts off definitely where you see this girl getting in late obviously and the people waiting to receive her which means she knows she's late and then seeing her in different spots uh, in a pensive mood understanding that she's thinking of somebody uh, i think the story just fell into place which was it just fell right into place beautiful The story goes of a man outdoors uh, to himself. He's an outdoorsy person. We're starting shooting him at the tent, and we're going to move forward, uh, shoot him on an elephant, which is uh, just landed in from Jaipur. I think um, the way I look at it always is I always like to work with people that I'm comfortable with. I always like to strike a rapport so I can, if I feel that I need to say something, I can come out loud and say, listen guys, this is what we need to do, this is what the shot needs to say because further down this is where it's going. And I think as long as your communication is right and you can get the talent to think the way you're thinking and create the atmosphere that you want to get it into, uh, you're half the way there. Because your talent's already saying, okay, this is what he's trying to do, right? And I always try to make it a point where I say, okay, so let's, let's get, get away, come back and it's just not a still, it's about getting the motion into the picture. So if you see me when I'm normally directing shots, I'm always saying, look away, come back in. So it's almost of the model's acting. I think if you can get the model to act, you're half the job's done. So the whole thing, ability to get them to get into the flow of things and to communicate that this is what we're doing and not shooting beautiful visuals will create the motion that you need. Uh, and I think that's the base. And uh, I just say, it's the team that gets that together. If everybody understands what page you're on, uh, you're achieving that already. You have to get your team to believe and accept the direction that you're going in. And in the case of our story, I think everybody not only did that, but also added on to it in several layers, which is just showing, uh, if you look at all the Polaroids, I mean, it says it there. I'm so excited I see the story before it's up. Simply put, Jeff Vespa is an artist and one of the best known celebrity photographers in the business. For many years, Jeff has built a rapport with many of Hollywood's elite. There is a trust between Jeff and his subjects, which is essential when considering the time constraints that Jeff has to work with him. It is nothing less than miraculous the results that Jeff obtains in such a short time. Jeff is the official photographer for the Sundance and Toronto Film Festivals, where he captures the portraits of all of the attending stars. I don't know how you would ever get anybody to give you an assignment to shoot a celebrity when you haven't shot one in the first place. But for me, um, I, since I shoot events, I built tons and tons of relationships. And the way we started doing portraits was doing them at the festivals. So it was the first Sundance then Toronto, Cannes, Venice. That's the way I first started doing portraits was at events, essentially, at you know, major film festivals. It, it's just, I'm, I'm sure everybody's taking different routes, but I think mine is unique, and I think, it's inter I think it's a good way to do it because most portrait photographers never meet the celebrity they're photographing until they, the day they get there. And so, and not only that, most people, portrait photographers don't know the publicists, don't know the managers, don't know, it, know the agents. I know all those people, so sometimes I might not know the person, but I know the people surrounding them, so they immediately feel comfortable because the person can just say to them, oh, you know, you can trust this guy, sort of thing. You know? but I think I'm very relaxed when people come in, and, and I think I make them feel comfortable very quickly. So I, I, think, I think it's a good way to have come up because I know, you know, it allows me to know them before I shoot them, and it's really, really a benefit to, um, to shooting portraits because how can you expect to get emotion out of somebody if you don't even know, you know, if you don't even know them, you know what I mean? You've got to get them to trust you. You know, I mean, you hear when, 
you know, actors talk about great directors and they're like, oh, I trust him and I just did anything he told me to do sort of thing. It's the same with a photographer. If they don't, if you've got to get people to trust you in order to get that, you know, get the stuff that you want, you know. Isabella Rossellini, yeah. I mean, she's fantastic. She's like a classic beauty, you know. And uh, we, I have photographed her before um, for another film uh, in Sun at the Sundance Film Festival. And uh, she's just really fun. She really gets it. She's got a great, like, kind of cheerful personality. So she's really cool. I mean, it was really nice. And she's someone that really kind of is very present, you know. She doesn't really have any kind of like fakeness about her. So someone like her is very easy to actually photograph. Pierce I've photographed a couple times. He's awesome. I mean, he's an amazing guy. I mean, what I love about Pierce is, you know, he's that, you know, ultra good looking, great guy. And you'd think when you look at a guy like that, that they're not going to be like the nicest or they're not going to be as, you know, open or whatever. But that's not the case with Pierce. I mean, he's really, really funny. Again, you would think like, you know, someone, Pierce, being so good looking, you'd think he'd be kind of like that, you know, suave, you know, want to pose that way and stuff, and he doesn't. He's the exact opposite. He loves, um, Pierce loves to, you know, make fun and do jokes and like kind of make really funny faces, and it's just, it's very cool because you get really great animated stuff, and it's such a counterpoint to like his good looks that it's just, it, the pictures look awesome. Elle is, Elle is amazing. Elle is an, an amazing woman because obviously she's a, uh, true professional, she's been doing this for, you know, 25 years, She's has so much experience. I mean, working with her is like, you know, working with another artist, because she gets it, you know what I mean? So you're doing it together, it's not you, me, like, doing a photo shoot and the other person just sitting there, it's like you're both working, you know, at the same time, and she really knows her light, she knows her poses, she knows what looks good. Well, I tend not to instruct people anyway, that's just my way, like I don't really direct so much. I just kind of like try to, you know, uh, observe and capture and rather than, you know, telling people what to do. But somebody like Elle is different because it's like two artists working together on a project. Because she's working, like she's trying to make it the best it can possibly be, just like you are rather than the actor like kind of not knowing what's going on or not really being into it. I mean, I mean, obviously she's into photography also. I mean, she has to be. This is what she does for a living. So to have somebody that knows and understands what you're trying to do and working, you know, with you in, in for that goal is pretty awesome. So it's not just her posing. It's kind of like, you know, she's thinking like, let's do good pictures. She's thinking like, let's try to do this. Let's try to do that. Let's look at the light. Let's look at, you know, Maybe that pose isn't working or whatever, and she really is working with you, you know, so that's really cool. Yeah, I mean, it's great to be able to work with, you know, actually work with the, the talent and, you know, get exactly what they want. And what I, what I love doing is, you know, capturing a photograph that the person themselves says, oh my God, I love that picture. Because to me, that they're the audience. I mean, obviously, everybody else is the audience as well, but to me, the person, the audience for me, the person I'm trying to please, is the subject. Because I really try to capture people, um, you know, for who they are. You just try to look for genuine emotion. I mean, that's really what, you know, what any art is about, is trying to capture, you know, or convey some type of emotion, you know, some kind of emotion. And that's what we, you know, I look for, you know, so people have a connection and an emotional response to the work. I've been doing this for about, um, about eight or nine years or so. Yeah, I, I studied photography. I studied photography in uh, Montreal at Concordia University for a couple of years, but I dropped out of there. I actually had my professors in, in Montreal saying, you should go back to Toronto and, and find a photographer you like and, and fetch him coffee and stuff like that and, you know, learn the business. So I, I took him up on that and I packed it in. Assisted for a little while, but then I, you know, got a break shooting some catalog. The next thing you know, I was shooting like for J.C. Penney and all this. The fashion industry should be grateful to Paul's professors that he heeded their advice and gave his passion a shot, as Paul has a fresh look that shows in his work.
Yeah, no, I'm gonna do one more. Jump down to that step. Katie, let me see you there. The art directors at the magazine came up with the concept. I think we're going to do about 14 pages, so... Yeah, we've got a lot of... We've got outdoor locations. We're shooting here in the cafe. And uh, we've got some sort of late-night locations we're shooting, so... Yeah, it's been very well put together. Yeah, it was, thought, it was well thought out, and it was just a matter of coming in and shooting it. Um, we, had, we had a narrative that we were following, uh, that, you know, the, these two girls... You know, we're kind of like the Paris uh, and Nikki of St. Petersburg. <laughs> the rich bad girls who go to the wrong side of town and, and pick up some revolutionary bum and bring them back to their swag digs. Um, it's, it's okay to follow that, but as we've been doing it, we've, we've, we've shot it in that way, and we've also just done some just great portraits of them. You know, I think it's nice just to shoot beautiful girls in great clothes, and we place them just so, and we got some great portraits. So as we're doing the narrative, we're also shooting it as a series of portraits, which, which will look fantastic, I think, all laid out together. And then from there, you know, we, we talked together about locations, and, you know, the stylists pulled all the clothes, you know, with that reference in mind. So the idea came from them in the first place. And then they brought me in and we bounced around ideas as far as locations and what would work with the theme. You know, it's, it's, it's a real treat to work with these guys. It's, it's a thrill for me. And the art direction's good, and the casting's fantastic, and the clothes are great. I mean, once all those things are in place, you've got a good team. It, it's, it's a treat. It's not even work, it's fun. The casting process, in this case, um, was done through email. It changes job to job. Oftentimes we'll do a casting and I'll be sitting there as well. But uh, this was sort of put together sort of last minute. So they emailed me with some comps of a couple of gals and they were fantastic, perfect for the job. And I emailed back saying, looks great to me. And I saw their books online. <laughs> and you two are really close to this guy. Really laughing, you're enjoying this guy's company. That was pretty fun. We did this cafe shot. Uh, we had the girls dancing. We got one of those bros who was like selling hats on the corner to sit down with them at the cafe. We gave them all beers and told them to tell them stories, and he did. And they started laughing. And the next thing you know, about 300 people were there. And we had some guitar players, and uh, it was fun, man. It was really fun. It was a hoot. My delight was dropping pretty fast, so I was, I was panicking. But what a blast. You know, the models were great. I'd never, I'd never met any of them before this morning. We saw their cards. So, you know, the cards only tell you so much. You, you've got to meet them in person. But, you know, they move well. You know, are they good people? They interact with each other. We needed these guys to really they're, they're, make like four good friends. And... Today we went down to look for location and we, we came across this great little corner, had a little uh, bistro and a little cafe and there was a guy selling books and it was super charming and so we thought, well, let's shoot here. And this woman came walking by carrying like bananas and mangoes on her head. <laughs> and uh, we did a really great shot, I think it was one of our best shots. This little portrait of her with the other guys in front of this little doorway. And it's a little smile. Not too hot, not too sexy, more fun. Okay. We haven't shot anything yet. Okay. That's beautiful. Okay, well, uh, as far as knowing if you have, you know, the shot, the magic shot, 
Yeah, some, sometimes, sometimes I do. Sometimes, you know, you just know it fell together. Everything fell together. You know? We're all giggling and screaming. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think we got that. Yeah. Okay, super. <laughs> and uh, you, you know you've got it. But you know, quite often, something that seems thank you, something that seems mundane, you know, and maybe forgettable. Later on, you've got the contact sheets in front of you, and you just think, wow, this was a shot. This really blew my mind. Other times, they'll shoot something and think, you know, it would really just went to hell. You know, <laughs> nothing looked good. And you know, weeks later we'll get the film in front of us and think, man, this is this is it. This is the shot. Uh, and oftentimes, you know, those have been covers. You know, sometimes you use a clip test. You know, you, you just run one frame uh, of a roll in the lab just to see if the rest of the you know the rest of the roll needs whatever kind of processing time. And often that little clip test is the one. It's the shot. So yeah, often. You'll know, you'll, or you'll really think that you've got it, or you know you've got the shot, and more often than not, I'm surprised by the ones that, you know, seem to have slipped by. Uh, yeah, I was really happy with the shots today. They went, they went very, very well. And I'm glad, because we didn't have much time to think about them. So we did the entire story in two hours. It stopped raining, so we decided to go to the island to do that yacht shop. Went down there with the yacht, and uh, the sun came out of nowhere. More straight to us, Philip. They straight turn this way. And lean a little forward. Okay, here we go. Great, thank you. It, and it was great. It was great. It looked beautiful, and then with this little tiny window, and we managed to get our shot. More straight to us, Philip. Straight. And lean a little forward. OK, here we go. The concept was pretty simple. They were just strong, single shots, no variation. Get the shot we want and shoot it. We, didn't, we weren't shooting any incidental shots. There was no narrative going on. It was just five strong images. So it was easy to find our spot. Philippe is, Philippe is great. I think mean, it was just a strong look. Drop them in, and the shops damn near shot itself. <laughs> it's a real treat to work with, with a talented model that gets it, understands what you're doing, and, and, they, and they move so well. It's acting, and it's dancing. It's it's it. So much is involved with it, and it's a real treat to work with a good one. You know, it, some models are a little bit inexperienced, but you know what? You just get to direct them. Sometimes you have to place them just so. It takes a bit more work, but we've always got we always get our shot. London, Paris, New York, Toronto. Canadian-based photography legend Struan has had an impressive career over the past 40 years. Struan has shot some of the most recognizable faces in the world, such as Nelson Mandela. Struan still, to this day, is the only fashion photographer to have his work exhibited in Canada's National Gallery. And for good reason as Struan's eye for shooting women and fashion is rivaled by few. Oh, leave that, leave that. <laughs> that looks good. Looking over the top, straight ahead. I really didn't plan to get into fashion photography. Most photographers back in the 70s were generalists, so we shot a bit of everything under the sun. And uh, I realized that uh, I loved uh, shooting people, I was shooting models and actors, and uh, I really enjoyed that. And decided at one point, uh, just instead of being a jack of all trades, concentrate on something and, and do it well. I like things that are exotic, probably more on the erotic side. Um, I love the sensuality of the women in my shots, so I love to bring that out. And a lot of it's a f how much I can get away with. 
um, in terms of the personality I'm working with. Well, fashion is all about creating a style. I think a lot of us search for that. Uh, we start taking pictures and then we realize that we're doing it maybe subconsciously. A lot of my European background uh, gave me a little bit of a European flavor to a lot of my shots. Uh, I love doing horizontals because I love using, incorporating backgrounds. And that led to, obviously, wanting to see women, it's a bit like window shopping, wanting to see women doing certain things in front of the lens. And I'm probably a bit of a romantic, so a lot of that comes into my shots. And uh, I see women as beautiful uh, creatures, so I, I love to sort of pull a lot of that out. And you, you want to try and hopefully capture some of that when you shoot fashion. So a lot of what the style was created by a mix of the two. My view on life, which probably isn't real. <laughs> Fashion isn't real. I think after several decades of shooting this, you become a little uh, tougher on yourself. And like you say, been there, done that, done this a hundred times. You know, how am I going to up the ante? It's always upping the ante. And it's got to be very avant-garde. So you do have to be edgy. And you've got to, I think, even uh, scare yourself a little bit if you don't scare yourself. As I say, if you don't screw up, you're not really trying hard enough. So the whole idea is to really push the envelope as much as you can. And uh, eventually you find your style and uh, that changes as you get a little older. You see life a little differently, so that starts to get incorporated into your images. Many of his images have a narrative quality to them. His black and white work has a film noir style, stark, deeply shadowed, and evocative. He breathes life, emotion, and passion into each shot. Struan is a much sought after award winning photographer who has won Cleo's for his advertising work. Well, when I started out shooting fashion, um, obviously, I moved from doing models' comps and actors' headshots to doing magazine work. Uh, I suddenly realized, though, when it came to advertising, that for the same shot I did that beauty shot for, for a cover, I could be paid about 10 times more for an advertising shot. But once you get into editorial, you can open up a little bit, and uh, they hire you to do what you, what you do best. You know, a lot of people think that shooting for a magazine and flying the bomb is just, it sounds like a lot of fun, but I'm not saying uh, just because advertising has stress, editorial doesn't. We do have uh, a time limit, getting up at 5 in the morning and making sure that everybody's on set by 6.30 certainly um, adds to the, uh, the mix. We do have uh, a time limit. We're working with a celebrity who has a grueling schedule. Uh, we've got to work with the weather. There's a big cloud in the way. <laughs> Otherwise the sun would be hitting this right now. So I'm about here for the wine angle. Yeah. I don't think we're going to get much luck there. Uh, fortunately the sun did eventually come over the horizon. We had to wait an extra hour. For a magazine, uh, there's always a little eye candy shot that you want to do for an opening yeah. page to establish the, uh, the location and the personality you're going to be shooting. And we had India Hicks uh, in, in this tree in the middle of the water. A beautiful eye candy shot. Can somebody uh, order some wind? Just a little bit? No. Everybody blow? <laughs> Good. Oh yes, here comes the wind, I love that. That's we got you. And then the um, second shot decided to change the outfit, make it a little more colorful. We threw in an umbrella and uh, sort of pumped up the, the color in the, in the shot so it had a bit of a contrast. Okay, here we go again. Beautiful. The sun did come up eventually, otherwise we would have had to do it the next morning. So all of these time restraints uh, do factor in. 
That is beautiful. Let's try this. Let's start here. So shooting uh, India was, you know, a delight. And obviously being in the Bahamas and yeah, we had the luxury of, you know, some beautiful scenery. It's just the thrill of getting those, you know, the magic hour and the light and uh, the subject matter that we had, as you'll see by the shots uh, that we took, uh, certainly is the magic you're looking for.